Good afternoon, everyone. Please get your headsets if you don't have one, because that's the only way you can hear anything. This session will be starting in a few minutes to be the Interregional Dialogue on Internet Governance Forum. Once again, welcome and get wired up, please. Right, welcome. My name is Nenna. I'm actually just representing an IGF like most of us. And I've been asked to moderate, so I'm not chairing. What I need to do, my, my chief job is to make sure you keep within our two minutes speech slot limit. And if you don't, I'll just get up and punch you. Or uh, um, maybe someone can volunteer to be the punch, the punch man. So I just show you who to punch and you go there when the person goes beyond two minutes. We have a very long list of um, speakers. And in our earlier consultation, what we decided was to try and limit ourselves to two minutes each. So we will get the grasp of our efforts and be able to plan data. We are having two sessions, two sessions of 90 minutes each. But for this session, you will agree with me that we've already taken about 10 minutes of it. So we run for 80 minutes, go for a tea break, come back and run the, night, the other 80 minutes and go back home. And just in case you don't know, there should be some European Champions League going on tonight <laughs> on soccer. Right. Um, a few of us will have to step out, so I would please um, request that we allow those people to make a quick intervention, step out and come back so we can achieve better. This is what we are going to do. Um, in the first 80 minutes, we will ask you to introduce yourself and share with us one or two emerging issues from your national, regional, or whatever IGF. So what we're doing now is to introduce ourselves introduce our governance forum and share with us one or two emerging issues. I'm going to begin with the two people who are sitting just by me. Yes, one is in red, one is in blue. What does that mean? Okay, nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Nina. <clears throat> My name is Marilyn Cade, and I am the Chief Catalyst of the IGF USA. You will notice that our name is a little different than some of the other national and regional uh, groups, and I think that's one of the indications of the flexibility. Uh, but our name is IGF-USA. Um, just to, we have a steering group of 87 people that is constantly growing, 
just to quickly focus on the emerging issues for us, I want to first of all point out that we are, I think you're going to find we're very different than most of the initiatives. Um, we take a uh, global perspective with a national view and we do no national issues. The emerging issues for us, I needed to say that because the emerging issues for us are the um, uh, risk and threats to the multi-stakeholder model, um, not within our own country, but that we see that are really emerging elsewhere. Uh, in particular, we are concerned about the risk and threats to the IGF that in some cases are growing out of a lack of understanding of the relevance of Internet governance. And we see the need to demystify what Internet governance is by talking about its component parts, such as privacy, security, the um, uh, freedom of access to information, so that when we talk to people, policymakers and others about Internet governance, it seems more relevant. And so an emerging issue is the need to demystify and enhance understanding of the relevance of Internet governance as really applicable to both business, civil society, and governments. Um, and uh, then I think also we have a, a very significant focus on um, trying to ensure that that moves then into broadening the participation of more and more people and organizations and entities and government, different kinds of ministries in Internet governance. Thank you. Hi, I'm Leonid Turov. Uh, I'm, one, I'm on the organizing committee of uh, Russian Internet Governance Forum. Well, I would echo some of uh, Mar uh, Marilyn's concerns, and uh, I would also add uh, some specific problems um, uh, 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 typical of Russia. Number one is uh, that b widening gap between uh, the, uh, uh, the speed of uh, the velocity of development of the Russian Internet, on the one hand, and uh, the uh, low intensity of the dialogue on critical issues uh, pertaining to Internet governance, on the other hand, uh, which can partly be ascribed uh, to the lack of support from local businesses or interests uh, uh, in the problems, in the in the, that range of problems, uh, of, uh, on, on on the part of uh, the local businesses and very very uh, low interest and uh, still a huge lack of academic uh, support uh, or academic interest in, in this area. So no academia is uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, exists in this area. N no research. Uh, number two, and this is very serious and this is political issue, I mean uh, at least politicized issue. Uh, 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 what we can see now is that uh, very visible uh, oppressive trend in Russian legislation, specifically as far as the internet is concerned and the brandishing the f uh, uh, flag of uh, uh, a fight against uh, child pornography, there is that quite uh, noticeable attack uh, uh, on certain, uh, well, on basic internet's, uh, internet's rights and freedoms. And this is a very alarming, a very disturbing trend, and we are perfectly aware of that. And uh, I believe that it may hamper further development of uh, the Russian Internet Governance Forum and the Internet Governance in that Russian segment of the Internet per se. Thank you. Um, hi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Subhi Chaturvedi. I'm a professor of journalism and communication and new media studies, and I run a foundation called Media for Change. Um, I went on to be a part of the MAG, the multi-stakeholder advisory group that put together the India IGF recently. We, this was the second IGF that we've held. It's called the India Internet Governance Conference, um, but we believe that we can call it by any other name. It would still remain um, one of the first key initiatives that have been able to take the discussion on India and Internet governance in India uh, to every platform possible. Um, so whereas we've had great success in telecom with Internet, it's not nearly been close. 
we are, our interventions in internet governance are only just beginning. And with the critical numbers that India represents, this is something that we take very seriously. So I'm happy to share that though this was initiated and led by the industry, this was far more uh, one of the most multi-stakeholder and very well represented initiatives with participation from four key stakeholder groups, academia, industry, um, the media, government and um, a, a fifth constituency that we managed to create so we uh, this was two days and we dedicated an entire half day session to a session which was led and constituted entirely of the youth uh, but one of the key concerns that still remains for a country the size of india 1.3 2 billion people or the size of China or Russia, uh, a single national IGF does not address these concerns. So um, with the numbers and the disparities within regions, uh, within India, and we're looking at regional and enhanced cooperation, and that's one of the things that I'm hoping would emerge to institutionalize best practices across different IGFs. Um, so our key concern is we're clearly looking at a possibility of two or three national events which um, can uh, debate and frame the key issues with a series of regional events that can stem debate and can influence policy. So uh, for us, an emerging issue clearly would be how to continue to engage with the government because at, there are moments when you don't know when you're in the room or out of it. So that's one of the key concerns. And the second is clearly the fact that we would want to expand the scope because being truly representative is one of the key challenges that we have in front of us. Thank you. Many thanks, India. I had taken a gentleman, but I didn't know he was wearing a red tie. So I just kicked him out, and I took a gentleman who is all blue. So you're welcome. It's a blue day. Thanks. Uh, well, blue is usually associated with uh, sort of sadness, so I hope I can <laughs> cover the entirely opposite uh, spectrum, if you like, mm. of emotions. <laughs> no math, Lindy. Um, my name is Mark Carvel. I'm from the UK government. Um, I'm not going to talk about the UK IGF. I defer to my to my good friend Martin Boyle from Nominet, who's who's here, who's going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the Commonwealth Internet Governance Forum, the CIGF, um, which uh, UK government has been very supportive of. We put money into it, and uh, we've facilitated activities and so on. Um, for those who are not familiar with the Commonwealth Internet Governance Forum, this was established in 2009 and falls under the Commonwealth Connects program, uh, which is a program for the ve a vehicle for knowledge and uh, technology transfer across um, the Commonwealth um, states. Um, and uh, it's it's a unique kind of forum in a way because it's not regional. We have members of the Commonwealth across all uh, continents S but um, we it, the idea for this came together really out of the global IGF that um, there were going to be issues of common interest amongst Commonwealth member states and that there would be value in uh, in uh, formulating an identity for the Commonwealth in the global IGF which we are doing uh, here very actively and uh, also to promote awareness of the multi-stakeholder model amongst uh, all the Commonwealth uh, membership, which includes a lot of um, developing countries, of course, and small island states, uh, some of which are, um, don't have the resources to engage directly in the global IGF, so the Commonwealth IGF serves that uh, function. Um, we meet during the global IGF, as I just mentioned. We don't have separate standalone um, uh, meetings at this time, although that that is something we may well consider uh, 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 in the way ahead for the Commonwealth IGF. We do a lot of online activity. Um, we have a, a website and uh, that's linked with social media, Twitter, Facebook and so on. And um, content related to internet governance that has Im uh, relevance uh, to the Commonwealth, that affects the Commonwealth indeed is posted on the website on a regular basis. We have uh, regular blog contributors consisting of uh, experts from um, all over the Commonwealth providing regional perspectives uh, in, uh, of the, uh, uh, across the whole uh, um, range of Commonwealth um, experience across the globe. 
And uh, there's a newsletter which captures a lot of this uh, key information that's distributed every four to six weeks or so. Um, we we started with the first project on um, child protection. We've got we had a toolkit which we developed two years ago, and um, there, in, there is in fact a, a session on that now as we speak, um, which um, uh, will be with a view to updating it. Our big project at the moment is cybercrime. We have a Commonwealth Cybercrime Initiative. We're going to have a workshop today at 4:30. Um, that is a unique coming together of a lot of. Um, key partners in tackling cybercrime. We've got um, uh, the UN Office of Drugs and Crime, the Council of Europe, ITU, Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization, ICANN, and several other partners very active in, in the cybercrime uh, field who've come together in this initiative. So that's our main focus at the moment. We've also got a, a youth project underway. We've got uh, a young person sponsored here at the IGF in Baku. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Mark. So we've gone this way and that way, and I'm going straight up to you. There is a, a mic, there's a wireless mic in front of Arab IGF that will go down. Don't sleep off, it may come just to you after him. So keep awake and keep attentive. Right, is that better? Yes, it is. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, for your forbearance and allowing me to uh, uh, start uh, here. Um, I'm Martin Boyle. I'm with the UK IGF, uh, which uh, was set up uh, very shortly after the IGF was initially created with the intention of trying to help share uh, among UK stakeholders what was coming out of the Internet Governance Forum and helping the stakeholders to prepare for the IGF meetings. Uh, so uh, we've been going for quite a number of years. Um, and this, this year uh, in March uh, we held uh, our um, main annual meeting uh, and that was based on uh, issues that had been identified by UK stakeholders uh, as being of significant interest to them. Uh, and we did workshops there that helped us to prepare inputs into uh, the three panel sessions uh, in, uh, in Baku that we have uh, sponsored. Uh, one of those uh, is on content and changing markets uh, for content, um, and that takes place tomorrow. Uh, and one on identity management, which is taking place at this very moment. Um, and the third one uh, was uh, on the issue of acceptable behavior on the Internet. Uh, and this is the issue uh, that has come out of the London Internet Cyber Conference uh, and the Budapest Cyber Conference. And that last one uh, we took in front of uh, a parliamentary conference uh, just a couple of weeks ago in October, and that meeting we had uh, this morning. Um, one of the big issues that um, uh, was from uh, the talking about acceptable uh, behavior on the Internet uh, was to try and move the dialogue, and this is at the request of the UK government, who've been very much a driver of doing that wider consultation, uh, of moving the discussion out of uh, a very heavily government-focused uh, forum and widening it to uh, um, a multi-stakeholder environment. Uh, and so we did that in front of Parliament and we did that uh, again uh, this morning. Uh, and one of the messages that came out from uh, that workshop was that uh, we should be encouraging other uh, regional and national IGFs uh, to pick up this theme, working with their governments to try and help their governments understand the issues uh, associated uh, with the concept of acceptable behavior on the internet. So I think this is uh, a very exciting invitation from governments to get engaged and tr to try and inform uh, the discussion. 
uh, and something that uh, uh, we certainly in the UK will carry on doing, uh, perhaps uh, also in conjunction with some European partners. Uh, so that really is the sort of the, the big issues that have gone our way uh, in recent months. Uh, so thank you very much, Chair, for letting me have the floor. Thank you very much, UK IGF. Um, don't go too far with the microphone, but we'll just come here. Please thank introduce you, yourself and, introduce and give us an idea of what emerging issues are in your IGF. Thank you so much, Chair. Uh, my name is Yulia Morenets. I'm here to represent a uh, Ukrainian NGF, which took part at the end of September this year. And uh, mainly, um, the Ukrainian NGF changed a little bit the format this year. It was one day meeting. It was very successful and um, would like to bring an issue of remote participation. It was a very, very successful and active remote participation coming from 200 countries, practically, if we uh, count the connections. And the main issues um, I would like to underline that came out from this meeting, it was mainly to um, uh, how to better protect consumers, so to make better consumers protection in the field of information society, how to make responsible local government bodies in the field of information society by legal and regulatory measures. Um, as well, um, there is a need that came out from this meeting of the um, development and the reviewing of the existing legislation or drafting legislation in the field of information society, touching uh, subjects of the information society, um, as well as the assistance for uh, better broadband expansion in Ukraine. Uh, so mainly uh, was the main issues for Ukrainian IGF. Um, I'm here as well to speak about an initiative uh, called the um, Youth Internet Governance Forum, uh, which I'm a member of MAG, organizing committee of, of this Youth Internet uh, Governance Forum, which was, um, the idea was presenting, uh, presented to, um, during the consultation meeting uh, of IGF in Geneva of this, uh, uh, in, in Geneva, uh, in May of this year, sorry. So, uh, um, we already, uh, the, the main issues that uh, young people think need to be addressed, it's practically safe and responsible use of internet, so cybersecurity issues, copyright issues, and of course ICTs for better economic and social inclusion uh, of the voice of uh, young people. Uh, just to give you um, a few more details, uh, after the um, meeting that took place in um, the consultation meeting uh, in Geneva in May of this year, uh, the website of uh, this Youth Internet Governance Forum was already developed, so you are welcome to, uh, to, to, uh, to have a look at the video clip and the message of the young people on 3wyouthigf.com. Thank you. www.youthigf.com. Fine. That's where we go to get the message of the youth. Um, ask someone from Cote d'Ivoire IGF. I would also like to add to the youth perspective of emerging issue in my country, and which has taken up the greater perspective thus far, because the youth will realize are the ones creating content. So most of the bloggers and people uploading pictures and events and videos are you young people. So for us, there is a big chunk of youth inclusion in the national IGF and we're a country that has something called a youth parliament in Cote d'Ivoire. We actually have young people, elect young people to a kind of house that decides on the issues of young people. And these young people have been very instrumental in drafting the charter of online behavior in the country. Uh, so I, I, I kind of feel that my, my emerging issues in my country are actually the same with other uh, countries. Um, we are going left and, and then right. Now with your permission, may I just add uh, 30 seconds of intervention. It's a Twitter intervention. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we're at www.iigc.in. And just to share a little bit on the youth initiative, um, so the half-day session was part of You Dig. This was a unique event for us because you had participation from across the country, from some of the leading 25 colleges, uh, which had representation, and you had some of the best orators speaking on issues around internet governance, anonymity, and not only did they debate ferociously and passionately, they also ran the IGF. 
So you had youth volunteers across every session participating, selecting jury, and being involved and engaged in. That's something that I'm very passionate and very proud of and happy to share. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for our remote modera moderators, in case there is an IGF online, we'll be glad to get feedback from those people. Who's got the mic in front of it? Since it's an IGF, okay. The mic is in front of her. Go on, Ma. Thank you, Nana. Um, I am Christina Arida. I am from the National Telecom Regulator in Egypt, which uh, is uh, assuming the role of uh, the Arab uh, IGF Secretariat. And I'm here to report on the Arab uh, IGF, which uh, took place uh, only uh, one month ago in, um, from uh, the 9th to the 11th of October in uh, Kuwait. <coughs> Actually, um, I, c I can't really report on a full year of activities because uh, the Arab IGF was, uh, initiative was only um, uh, approved uh, last January and uh, the IGF itself took a meeting took place in October, so, uh, so it was just a year of uh, preparations uh, and I'll come back on the preparations and how they were in a multi-stakeholder in the second part of this session. But regarding um, uh, the emerging issues, um, our three-day meeting in Kuwait uh, had a very uh, vivid uh, discussion. Uh, let me just tell you that we had like uh, around 300 participants from 16 Arab uh, countries spanning crawl across all uh, different stakeholder groups, which, was, um, which has made the discussion actually very rich because we had so many different perspectives on the table. And um, I'll maybe try to reflect on some of the issues that were uh, popping up as mostly important from the different uh, sessions. Uh, the sessions actually went uh, along the very same lines of the global IGF, uh, the classical uh, themes. And so um, <coughs> um, the issue of uh, broadband uh, uh, connectivity and developing broadband networks in Arab uh, uh, countries uh, was, um, was heavily discussed. And in that respect, uh, uh, there was a focus on, um, on mobile uh, connectivity and uh, on uh, IXPs, Internet Exchange Points, and the need to have that. And uh, one initiative uh, was formed uh, actually to have sort of a dynamic coalition among pa um, interested participants in order to hook with uh, IXP uh, uh, programs and initiatives that are already taking place uh, within the region. Uh, the issue of content was also uh, uh, very hot. It was uh, a message was clearly sent out that uh, uh, local content has to come back home. Uh, and uh, and that um, Arabic content and the presence uh, of it is uh, kind of low uh, with respect to usage, uh, uh, which is uh, increasingly emerging from uh, the Arab world. Um, one other issue that took a lot of discussion is the issue of openness, and um, it was related to the Arab Spring and uh, to uh, the different momentum which is happening in uh, the Arab world, and there was a clear call uh, to, uh, uh, to have... Um, uh, the uh, human right perspective always within the picture and to have a freedom of expression um, um, be s um, handled as a, as a very important uh, issue for Arab populations. Uh, there, there was a call for uh, uh, governments uh, uh, to have this uh, perception always in mind. Um, Another uh, two more issues, I'll tell them very quickly. Uh, the it, it was identified that uh, it is very important to um, uh, develop the domain name industry in the Arab world. And so uh, there was a call for uh, international uh, uh, partners like ICANN to, uh, to partner uh, with uh, the Arab community to develop this industry. And last but not least was the youth uh, session, which was uh, very vivid, like you were discussing about the youth. It was one of the best sessions in the Arab IGF. And it focused on two main issues. It focused on the issue of, which is also related, on the issue of empowerment and uh, on the issue of uh, the, the effect of social networks uh, to empower uh, youth. Um, and uh, it was looked at uh, as it has to be, um, uh, internet governance had to, has to look at uh, how to empower youth through uh, entrepreneurships and SMEs in, in that industry. Thank you. Right, if you could pass the mic to the gentleman Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, I'll just, uh, my name is Makan Fai from the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. 
Uh, I am, uh, my institution is hosting the Secretariat of the African IGF. And uh, we organize the African IGF in Cairo from 2 to 4 October uh, with the African Union Commission. Martin, Our could you bring the mic closer? That we organize the African IGF in Cairo uh, from 2 to 4 October 2012. Uh, with the African Union Commission and uh, our uh, partners, uh, the Francophone Organization, Google, uh, APC, uh, NEPAD, FOSFA, and the uh, Sub-Regional African uh, IGF. Uh, the main uh, uh, peculiarity of the conference was that uh, it was a multi-stakeholder uh, approach where we had uh, government, academia, private sector, civil society, regional and international organizations. And we also had uh, another peculiarity which was the participation of uh, the various uh, sub-regional IGF, there were five. We had North Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, West Africa, and also the uh, uh, various national IGFs. Uh, some of the issues which uh, came out from the uh, discussion at the regional national IGF was that uh, prayer consultation was needed to identify the national actor whose attributes, experiences, and expertise uh, make it uh, more suitable to play the role of the convener of uh, the IGFs. And also the engagement was also needed from all stakeholders and uh, we needed also to focus on the discussion to take uh, into account what was uh, uh, priority at the, the national level. Also, it was uh, agreed that uh, remote participation and online discussions also uh, is uh, key and that the, regional re the reg national regulator also uh, should do take part. Uh, we discussed during the meeting also the various um, uh, teams of uh, uh, the International Governance Forum itself and we added uh, one uh, topic which was the African Digital Representation Strategy uh, to see how Africa should uh, work together uh, for its representation in uh, various international fora including uh, ICANN. Thank you. Thank you. I want to endorse as West Africa IGF, that that actually happened. And I also want to add that within the framework of the West Africa IGF, uh, which held in July the CA, one of the main issues was, um, it's been there for two, three years and we haven't found a way around it. One of it was the blacklisting of West African countries for those who live around that area. They know that there's, um, a lot of our national well, IPs general, uh, coming from our countries are being blacklisted. And we had also the issue of um, the, the, the issue that we haven't, another issue we haven't resolved, which is still emerging, I is that of data centers and the security of uh, data centers. And of course, cloud, bo both are linked. But yes, I want to endorse that uh, the Africa IGF did actually raise those issues that um, the Secretariat is speaking about. I think we need to come to the side of the table and maybe take a lady. The lady sitting by you. Yes. We are going to take Italy and Nigeria together. Uh oh I think Ponslet, it's e faster if you walk because you don't have heels. <laughs> okay, so we just take Italy and Nigeria together. Okay, so we agreed Italy 
and then Nigeria, we are good French <laughs> members in the GAC. Um, okay, so uh, two weeks ago we had uh, the IGF Italy in Turin, and uh, uh, is the fifth that we had since the beginning. And um, uh, one characteristic of Italy is that uh, every year we change the town. We rotating in order to spread the word inside the country. Then uh, uh, we had uh, an important, uh, um, an, an important uh, meeting uh, where we started discussing about the, the identity in the network and how the individuals may uh, control and verify if uh, their real personality is uh, uh, reflected in the network in a proper way and then how to intervene if this is not true. Then uh, we had uh, a, a very important uh, meeting uh, focused on the, on the issues of the moment that are more um, perceived by the community. That are digital divide in Italy among the regions uh, the problem of the infrastructure for Internet of the future, and then the uh, problems connected of the relation of the citizens with the government. Uh, so uh, the open government, the open data, and this kind of things, and the, and the agenda. Uh, today we speak a lot about digital agenda that is uh, in Europe, but all in countries, uh, um, uh, European countries, uh, very important because it is the future. And then democracy, and uh, how uh, encourage democracy in the internet uh, and freedom of expression and things like that. One thing we uh, obtained that was very, very relevant is that uh, uh, two ministers uh, that participated uh, not in person but uh, remotely um, wrote a statement uh, on uh, um, internet freedom of expression and on how to defend the internet and then also the position of Italian government uh, in vision of the wicked and this was something that was uh, caused by the appearance of the IGF Italy that we um, uh, obtained that uh, two ministers listened to us and then made a uh, response this is very important finally it is important that um, in order to prepare this IGF in uh, Baku, uh, we started uh, one month and uh, half, uh, half before this meeting, a public consultation on internet principles and uh, trying to involve all the community and we obtained a very um, significant results. These are the main lines and uh, we have here also a document with the description of the results uh, uh, we don't have a copy for everyone but we can leave at least <laughs> two or three um, and uh, also the uh, description of, of this uh, consultation that we made uh, in italy thank you mary thank you my name is mary uduma and um i convened the n the nigerian uh, yeah, <laughs> All right. Is it, is it on? Is it? It's okay. It it was I think on. it's on. Yes, you put convened on, yeah, the on. Nigerian what? <laughs> Internet Governance Forum. He, he interrupted me. He didn't have his, uh, so he didn't hear me. Okay. And um, in 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 um, briefly on emerging issues, we looked at cloud computing, local data warehousing localizing cloud capacity, security implications of cloud computing, vulnerability, and uh, profiling of our IP transaction and traffic. And it, it, was, it was a hot, it was really a hot debate on that, that we take exception to the fact that um, the, the traffic coming from Nigeria is profiled. And that's what we are bringing to the IGF, that we, we take exception to that. and. Uh, then the sustainability of the model. There was the case, we, w this is the seventh dialogue. What happens? How do we continue to sustain this dialogue um, in, uh, in the, I, uh, the, the IGN? Then the misillation of national secretariat uh, and encouraging youth participation. Those are the issues, the emerging issues. Then when we 
come to other uh, issues, then I'll, I'll raise those ones. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, why is Canada IGF? Okay, not too far. Cool. The region is very far, but the man is sitting very near. By the way, did you ever hear there was a time Zimbabwe and Canada were neighbors? And then the, the continent... That, that was a while back. <laughs> no internet then. Yeah, before my time, only briefly. So we have, uh, we have had two Canadian internet forums, and that's what we call them, the CIF, because there was a CIGF before us, as, as we heard. Uh, so we have the Canadian Internet Forum, and it tends to be uh, fairly domestically focused in comparison perhaps to the, US, the IGF USA, which as we heard uh, tends to be fairly global in the subject matter discussed there. So over the years, um, we have uh, refined the process by which we conduct the CIF. Uh, it's really a three-stage process that leads to a final all-day in-person um, forum and event. We begin by doing a national survey where we poll uh, a minimum of 1,200 people so we get relatively accurate results in terms of what are the issues uh, regarding the internet that are concerning Canadians. So we do a statistically relevant survey. You know, we get results that are, as they say, plus or minus 2%, 19 times out of 20. So it gives us quite an accurate feeling for what the Canadian public is concerned about when it comes to the internet. We follow that up with a two-month online consultation, which is guided by the survey results, but also allows Canadians to freely input other uh, issues of concern or interest. And it's interesting to see how those two inputs diverge. Uh, one of the reasons we did the survey is we wanted to get what we would call fact-based input in comparison to when you have uh, often small, extremely motivated and interested groups who then um, can, what we would say, uh, force issues through the tyranny of the minority. So we try to balance those two elements, fact-based and broad-based input as well as specialized and deeply held passionate interest. Uh, at the conclusion of that, we hold an all-day event. It's a one-day forum uh, where we bring the results from those two things together as well as have uh, various speakers from both the domestic, political, and internet uh, scene as well as, um, as, well as uh, foreign speakers. Uh, we had uh, Bertrand de la Chapelle as one of them, for example. The key issues for us uh, tended to be around digital literacy, and that would be fairly broadly defined. In fact, we had, uh, I think, elements that were about how to behave online, and we, we've seen, I think, some workshops on that area uh, here at, uh, at this forum, but also broader, uh, more broadly interpreted in terms of digital literacy, including perhaps how to install malware on your, or not install malware, prevent malware uh, on your computer, uh, installing antivirus, having the basic functionality to actually manage your own computer and your own online environment. So that was one. I think the, the real emerging issue that we saw that was different from previous years was around sovereignty online or jurisdictional issues. Uh, and uh, as I'm sure most people know, we sit on the northern border of the United States and much of our traffic, internet traffic, has to flow through the U.S and resides in U.S. data centers and transits U.S.-based uh, US internet exchange points. And Canada and the U.S. have very different privacy regimes. So that's become, I would say, a relatively hot topic in the internet space is how do we reconcile our traffic th flowing through foreign jurisdictions that have different privacy, uh, very different privacy regimes. So that became a very hot topic, particularly in light of the domain seizures that uh, the U.S. Customs Agency, or ICE, was doing and how that might affect uh, the Canadian Internet space. So I would say that was one of the hottest topics. Uh, the forum had, the in-person forum had 434 participants at the forum. 
the survey uh, was 1,200 people, and uh, the online form had over 3,200 unique visitors. So that those are some of the numbers that comprise the participation in the various elements of our forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Canada. Um, well, I think that unique input can only come from Canada. You may want to come this way to the man from Gambia. We are not taking him now because he's so far from Canada, but we're going to take Laknik. We'll just jump over the U.S., come to Panama, and go down. Yeah. Hello. Um, okay, my name is Andres Piazza. I'm public affairs uh, officer of LACNIC. Uh, we perform the secretariat for the LAC IGF, but we are not the only organizer of the LAC IGF. So, uh, as I, I wanted to start uh, clarifying that this is a multi stakeholder event that we uh, held in our region, and the group of organizers is also multi stakeholder. It started being uh, an initiative that uh, from the internet uh, community, the technical community and the civil society, but it started to, to spread and to become stronger and to upgrade in the not only in the participants but also in the supporters of the event and the organizers of the, of the event. So now uh, there's a eight people and eight organizations, the uh, committee of organizers, uh, two from each stakeholder. Uh, one, uh, so two from the, the private sector, two, two from the government of the region, and there are mechanisms in order to rotate the governments in to, to be part of this, this uh, program, and two from the technical community and civil society. Um, among the five different ed editions, uh, we started on 2008, our first edition, we have been rotating the location between different countries of the region, and this uh, year was also the um, first time we did a call for applications for different uh, organizations that wanted to help the event. Um, four different organizations applied, and we had a tough decision in order to uh, get uh, the, the, the place, and it was held in Colombia in September. Uh, th there was also a local multi-holder group that gathered in order to to drive this uh, endeavor, and uh, it was a very successful meeting. We had the, the record on part in face to face participants in 160 participants from 20 countries of the region, because this is not only Latin America, but Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, um, the Caribbean has also their own uh, IGF, but this IGF is not only from Latin America. Uh, what uh, was also a, a record is the, the quantity, the participants in the remote channel, there, there were like 427 four, uh, participants in a three days meeting, and the meeting uh, started being in the previous editions, uh, panels and speakers, and this time it was uh, moderators and open discussions in equal footing. And the agenda was determined in a bottom-up process. This is some of, of the of our uh, upgrades uh, on on the process of determination of the agenda. This time, there was a survey and 187 answers from the community helped to determine the agenda. So, uh, with all that those inputs, uh, we had uh, a structure similar to with, uh, with the main sessions of the IGF and the emerging issues uh, were plenty in every one of the topics uh, in, in uh, I can list uh, Wikid and the ITRs, uh, principles of, of internal governance, um, net neutrality, uh, internet as a public good, um, and also um, the, the typical discussions that the IGF has, and also cut, uh, cross-cutting issues such as, such as development, human rights, and capacity building. So. Uh, was uh, an interesting initiative and, and it will be improving with, with the years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was very interesting to have people from the region and the Caribbean as well. But we're not going to take your neighbors. We are going to go up to Europe and take Eurodic. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Um, uh, 
on behalf of Euridig, the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, um, I want to start by saying that it, Euridig is it's not it's an event. It happens every year now for the last uh, few years since 2008. But it's really an event and a process. And so you need both the process and the event together. So my opinion and my wh what I see has happened over the last years is that it's a, ca a case of building capacity. People come together. You, you have conference calls a lot. You prepare things together. You have planning meetings. We have one or two uh, planning meetings together a year in preparation for the physical meeting. And that's what I mean by a process. Because uh, the event gives you focus, you meet physically, and that's really very important, this is very important, um, but if you want to be inclusive, and if you want to be open, and if you want to be transparent, if you want to show that you are, I'm listening to you, I'm listening to you, then you really need to make many efforts, that's what we found, to get those people into discussions in between the meetings, and uh, I think we do a lot, of we, do, we do try very hard to try to bring in as many people as possible. So we have this sort of motto, which is op always open, always inclusive. It's never too late to get involved, so it's very flexible. It, it's very difficult, because if, <laughs> if things come too late, it makes things difficult to fit everything in. Um, but we had over seven, uh, for, for the last uh, Eurodig, uh, which happened in Stockholm uh, in June this year, and that was the fifth one, by the way, since 2008, uh, we had over 70 different proposals for different events, seven over 70, which was hard to uh, reconcile in, in two days. Um, but uh, we did it, um, and it was a lot to thanks to uh, the, the Swedish authorities, the government, the ministries. Um, it's not a government-led event at all. It's shared, I want to say that. But to have the physical event, it was really, it's really very helpful to have some government support because they send letters out to their ministers, their peer ministers in different countries. Getting that level of uh, impact at the political level is, is great. But they know it's not a, a government-led event, and and you know, it's a shared thing. So that 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 having that government support in one respect is very useful. But there's a strong civil society basis too. Business are involved, of course. So it, it, there's the technical communities are involved. We we have quite a few people who are multipliers. One of the things I think about having any dialogue is to make sure you have people who can reach out to other people, and they multiply the impact, and that really works. If you have really key people who have a good reputation. That really spreads the uh, spreads the happiness. Um, there were 600 people or so in st in Stockholm. Um, that which is which was probably the record so far in terms of attendance. Um, there were five remote hubs uh, in di different capital cities. We had eight workshops. We had eight plenary sessions, and we had five pre-events. And we had a number of things because we couldn't fit everything in. Um, we had flashes, so we created new things to let people have a 30 minute space somewhere pa in parallel to, 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 to for people to talk about things which are particular, which are rather intimate, maybe not for a plenary or for a workshop, not for an hour and a half or for two hours, but for something like 30 minutes. And so they had the chance to speak to groups of people who wanted to hear about the cookie directive or a particular publication or whatever. That was very useful. Um, so we had over, th over 30 events over two days. Time, okay. Um, Intellectual property was, a, was an issue. Um, difficult to get the right actors in, in the room. Everyone was singing the same song. Because, of course, you know, we need to share and create, but uh, the people who are defending copyright were not in the room. So I think we're learning that if, if we don't get the right people in the room next time, we don't, we don't do the session. We let the session go, we, we use the session for something else, basically. Otherwise, what's the point if everybody's singing the same song? And, uh, and in terms of time, um, I'll stop there by saying that um, we have messages from Stockholm at the end, messages from the event. That it's rough consensus. It's not conclusions. Um, we had a lot of youth, 100 youth involved, 3,000 tweets, which reached about fi 500,000 uh, people, I understand. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are going to hear from Gambia and hear from Sweden that has played a key role in Eurodic. Okay, hello. Okay. Good afternoon, I'm Ponce Light. I'm the conveyor for um, the IGF in the Gambia. The IGF in the Gambia works um, directly. did you say you're the conveyor? Sorry. 
I thought it was convener. Convener, sorry. For the for the IGF in the Gambia, which works in conjunction with the IT Association of the Gambia in direct collaboration with the Ministry of um, Information, Communication and Infrastructure, which is presently um, overseen by our president, who is who we consider as the champion of ICT in the Gambia. Um, the IGF in the Gambia has taken a structure that is always going to be held in the first quarter of the year. So the last IGF was held in the first quarter of this year, which was in February um, 2012. It, it, um, with, our with the collaboration with the Ministry of Information, Communication and Infrastructure, we also have um, certain key stakeholders um, that um, discuss about um, pertinent issues in regards to what we want to um, do um, within um, the Gambia ICT ecosystem in terms of um, internet governance. That is the local ISOC chapter, the University of the Gambia, the non-governmental agencies, the Chambers of Commerce and Industry, and um, also the regulatory authority. And one key area that we touched on in this, our last internet governance um, um, forum, which is always a two-day event, is in the area of internet um, governance for development. And the decision was taken that we have to get certain key ministries to come and discuss how the plan to use or their understanding of um, IG for development and we're very um, lucky that um, the ministry that did that this year was the Ministry of um, Health and Social Welfare whose uh, minister um, Ms. Fatim Baji is a specialist on ICT for development and she gave a very um, detailed presentation of what we can um, what the ministry is planning in terms of IG for development. One key area that came up during our, discuss um, our discussion was um, the, the Gambia is part of the countries that um, are getting the submarine cable, the African Coast to Europe submarine cable, which is actually going to be launched with the 23 countries involved in the Gambia this December 19th, is to generate more local content, especially when we discovered from this presentation for a, um, from this IGF for a population of 1.8 million, we have over 100,000 of our children who go to school through the Islamic system of education madrasas. So we want to make sure these children have access in Arabic language, which they used to study on the um, internet. And um, since then, it has developed that we are going to be having our internet exchange point sometime next year. And we are very um, l lucky, lastly, to say that in any of our local IGFs we organize, we try to get um, key um, experts from within the region to help support the process in areas we don't have expertise, like in internet law, because we're talking of um, um, going into looking at areas with intellectual property. So through the Ministry of Communication in Ghana, we got an internet lawyer to support us, and we got ICANN to, um, to support us too in the process of getting the Gambian um, community to understand more about the new generic top-level domains that were, uh, that were launched. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please raise Sweden IGF. Oh, really? Just by him? Could just leave the mic on so it goes. Okay. Uh, I'm from Sweden, from the Telecom uh, Regulator Authority. My name is Anders Johansson. And our main challenge is, um, one is to broaden and get even more stakeholders in the country interested and active in discussing and ident identifying challenges and forming policies on internet governance. Another one is the net neutrality about the challenges, consequences and impacts. Concerning our national IGF, we have um, two parts. Since uh, 1998, uh, we have uh, a three-day event we call the Internet Days. And we gather around 1,000 people in that event. And uh, it's driven, it's multi-stakeholder driven with many people engaged in, uh, in preparing and uh, uh, taking active parts in the discussions. The other part of the na National IGF is a reference group on internet governance, which also is multi-stakeholder, uh, and we, we, our 
regulatory authority invites, it's open to anybody who wants to take part uh, on, on the net or also physically in four days, in, uh, in events four days a year, half a day events. And uh, at the moment there are about 80 people uh, more or less active in, uh, in this reference group. And uh, the idea is to discuss and when possible uh, form national standpoints on, on internet governance issues. And sometimes this is, we can do it, sometimes not, but we can, when we can't do it, we identify the different views that are seen among the stakeholders and we can, can discuss. Of course, uh, this national uh, uh, dealing with the internet governance is uh, not all of it. The international is even more important. So that's why that's one of the reasons that we we hosted Eurodig last summer. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ping Hua Ang. I'm the chair of the group we call the multi-stakeholder group for Asia Pacific Regional IGF. <coughs> I actually have a bunch of slides, but I'm not showing them, so I have to paint for you the picture. <coughs> Begin with a logo. It's quite nice uh, of a bamboo sh bamboo. Um, and then uh, while in June, in uh, July in Tokyo, <coughs> no, I don't, don't have the slides. I have to, <coughs> you have to imagine Obata-san. <laughs> <coughs> in the photo is Obata-san, who is um, uh, one key person, but so modest that there's no mention of him in the final report. We have 300 uh, participants um, over three days. Uh, it's the third, third time we're having this only. Um, the first meeting was held in Hong Kong, second in Singapore, but it's, it's definitely growing. We have a youth uh, IGF photo of youths, okay. um, and um, uh, it's it's been going well. Uh, there are a bunch of youths from Hong Kong who are here. You see them. One of the leaders is here, Yanis. Okay, Yanis, welcome. <laughs> then uh, there's a nice hall. It's really shiny. You see the floor is shiny because we are using it for the first time. Amazing, uh, Obata-san arranged that. So now, uh, to get to the program, uh, the key parts of it, uh, we discussed many of the issues that you all discussed, uh, some new things that I uh, want to add, uh, law enforcement on internet, free expression, internet history, then something called the internet ecosystem, a two-sided market, question mark. I have no idea what this is about still. I attend a bit, but I still have no idea. Um, then protection of children, uh, IGF updates, the open data, cybersecurity, on the points of agreement, uh, there were actually uh, three points of unanimous agreements. Uh, in other words, some areas to work on, because I think we're all concerned about um, tensions and differences. The first is the criticality of IPv6. I think you heard Jeff Houston uh, talk about it uh, in, in one of the sessions. Uh, in Asia, in Asia PAC, we have run out of uh, IP addresses, and so v6 is absolutely critical. Um, part of the problem is that vendors don't uh, all have uh, v6 equipment. Some don't even have a roadmap to, to, to V6. Mm -hmm. Second one is on privacy in order for cloud computing to take off. Many of you have mentioned cloud computing and security. But from our discussion, the agreement, the unanimous agreement was it's not security that's the issue, it's privacy protection. You need to have international privacy agreements in order for, data for cloud computing to, to take off. The third area of agreement was ICT for disaster relief. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've held, uh, in fact, uh, Izumi uh, Aizu here uh, led a group after that to um, to go to the Sendai area where the uh, tsunami hit uh, to, uh, Japan uh, to look at how ICT might be used. The mayor of the town came, gave a presentation, and he actually cried in on stage. You don't hear anybody crying on stage in any IGF meetings, but it was very moving because of the of the disaster. And if ICT can help, I think we all feel um, something uh, good and, and and useful to contribute. Okay, that's it. Right. End of slide. I, th I thought you were going to cry, but anyhow, no, he didn't. Could you go to the other end to Portugal? And could I see the hand, um, hand of Asia Pacific? Okay, that's Asia Pacific. Okay, now I'm going to cry because he's got it all. But after you, we have to come to Bene. Okay, thank you very much. My my name is Pedro Vega. I am representing ISOC Portugal, that was one of the co-organizers of the event. 
The other was the foundation of science and technology that belongs to the Ministry of Education and Science. Uh, we had, uh, the event uh, took place on the 10th of July. Uh, we had fi 150 physical participants in, in Lisbon and uh, around 30 remote participants. Uh, we would like to improve that, but it was the, what we had. Uh, we prepared the document uh, that we called Messages from Lisbon that you can get in paper format from the Eurodig booth and I will talk later on a little on Eurodig. Uh, the discussion this year was organized on a, around a, uh, several topics. Uh, one of them was openness, universality, universality and neutrality of the internet. We all understand that this topic is very critical. Then we discussed cybersecurity and privacy, uh, intellectual property rights, and uh, the, uh, basically there was a big discussion. We had a participant of the Portuguese Pirate Party. Uh, uh, the, it was a lively discussion, and uh, there was more or less an unanimous uh, understanding that the, the legislation is not adapted to the, 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 the characteristics of present media. Uh, we discussed also new business and cost models, uh, social networks. Social networks are becoming very critical and it was also a, a hot topic. Uh, and then we had a discussion on the multi-stakeholder model and we invited someone from the telecommunication regulator to talk about uh, Wikid. Uh, basically the position of the Portuguese regulator is that uh, the, the, the internet is not be should not be discussed that wicked because the, regu uh, the, the old regulations take care of what's relevant. And uh, as you are pointing me that time, time is uh, going on, I would just like to announce that the next EuroD will be in Lisbon in the 6th and 7th of July. So after okay. Sweden, we'll be in Portugal. Okay. And I hope to see some of, of you participating. If you are not Europeans, at any way you can participate because uh, it's, it's, it's an evolving model. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will just bring the microphone over to Bene. And I was looking at the closed captioning, and it says the Parrots Party came to Portugal IGF. It's not the Parrots, it's the Pirates. But I do understand that Portugal is a very colorful country. OK, Bene. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Yaovi Atun uh, from ISOC Benin. Uh, we were part of uh, the organizer of the uh, National IGF, which is the first uh, IGF in Benin. Uh, the event was part of a week uh, ceremony uh, called uh, Internet Week in the country. So uh, it was an opportunity to discuss about uh, uh, some issues. Uh, the main one was uh, uh, the cyber security uh, that uh, people uh, found very important in uh, our, our region uh, now. And then the, the other issue uh, we, we talked about was also the uh, CCTLD uh, services. So uh, the, you, the participant uh, found very important to have a, a better uh, uh, CCTLD service in the country. And then also uh, the discussion was about the internet exchange point as we uh, focus on the uh, importance of local content. So uh, we think that is something that should be uh, seriously uh, considered. And uh, finally, one important uh, uh, issue of the discussion is that uh, we should have this uh, uh, forum uh, every year as we started so uh, we have uh, a committee that is in place and the intent is to have uh, every year uh, one uh, internet governance forum at the national level. Thank you very much. Uh, please, where is New Zealand IGF? Sorry? Japan. I wanted to see the hand of New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand stage that way will come back. Okay. Um, just before Japan uh, um, advises us on their 
emerging issues. I would like to see the hands of other countries that are here because I will only have four minutes left after Japan. So if you're reporting on any national or sub-regional IGF, I would like to see your hand now so that we'll schedule you after uh, Japan. Uh, what we will do after this round is to go for tea, whether it's a tea break or water break or internet break, whatever break for 30 minutes. And we are going to reconvene at half past the hour and we are going to harmonize our emerging issues and we are going to take our challenges and one or two key recommendations. And I do hope this will be okay for us. So we are going to round up now go for coffee or tea or water, come back for another 90 minutes, and during those 90 minutes, we'll be asking you to share with us the framework of the administration of the IGF. Some have done, have started already, but we'll also like to get more input. We're going to take our challenges, and we're going to take possible recommendations, and all of this we shall bundle up, debriefing tomorrow, and that will round up our report to the secretariat. Japan. Please uh, don't cry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm from uh, a mobile operator, but I also work for uh, the Japan ISP Association, and uh, which is the host uh, uh, secretary for the Japan IGF. Uh, this so um, IGF Japan was started three years, uh, two years ago, and then. Uh, we had uh, this annual meeting this year uh, co-located with uh, APR IGF uh, for one session uh, focusing on cloud computing. Uh, so generally what we want to keep is to have an annual meeting uh, and uh, discuss uh, various issues related to internet governance. Uh, but at the same time, we have various organizations in Japan which work uh, directly with the ministry or indirectly the ministry for uh, self-regulation or soft regulation so that most of the internet governance issues are uh, covered by all these uh, organizations and these mechanisms uh, at the moment. So that is why um, we are currently satisfied with uh, I IGF Japan having just an annual meeting. So th the current issues uh, related to internet governance is uh, uh, the, the first one is re really the relationship with the internet uh, for disaster recovery. Um, because what we found out in this disaster is not only that we can use the internet for the, the recovery, we had many, um, how do you say, uh, understandings of uh, old regulations that uh, will prevent uh, local governments to keep uh, private data in a secure manner, which means that they were just washed away. So, so in order to uh, keep uh, these uh, private uh, information in a distributed manner, uh, and and also allow the um, people to access these data uh, from various locations, we might need to uh, restudy, you know, all the 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 understandings or the background of the all the regulations which are protecting uh, privacy. Um, secondly. Um, Child protection and uh, banning of child porno is quite uh, a, a large issue that which is ongoing, and cloud computing, uh, which is currently discussed under the Japan United States uh, uh, Internet Economy Dialogue, is also getting a very large issue. And WCIT, uh, we are also sending a large uh, delegate to try to protect uh, the internet uh, uh, freedom. So uh, those are the the large issues currently running. And one big issue which may emerge is we have a big operation between the police department and the ISPs uh, in, ca uh, in case of uh, direct law enforcement is not, uh, does not work. But because there were some uh, failures in the mechanism uh, that uh, the police uh, department you know, punished the wrong people, uh, so that, they, that may be a very big issue uh, starting next year, how to, to fix that uh, I mean operation. Thank you very much. You, you need to do like this with the microphone. Just give it to the lady behind you. 
but I, I'm very impressed with the disaster relief role of, of internet and the data security that is behind it. And that, that phrase is ringing in my mind. We can't have our data washed away. We can't have our data snowed out. We don't want Sandy blowing away our, our data. And I think that is something that needs to be worked upon further. Uh, the internet uh, and uh, disaster relief. I live in a country that has just come up from war, Cote d'Ivoire, and we're building the, the idea of the internet for peace, internet for peace building, uh, and I do clearly relate to that point. Um, we are going to end with Lillian, Uganda and East Africa, and just know that you are standing between us and tea, and you know that saying in Africa that only a bad woman stands between people and the meal. Thanks, Nena. I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, I'm Lilian Naroga, and I coordinate the Uganda Internet Governance Forum. Um, I may not speak for East either for the East Africa IGF, because I think there will, there will be a representative in the, the session that follows. But um, uh, just to pick some of the emerging issues that we had discussed, some of these issues I've had, there we have some sort of community common issues coming up. Um, just maybe to give a brief background, this year's IGF was the seventh held in Uganda. It was held on August 10th. We had over 100 participants. And uh, for the first time, we saw a lot of government support, which I think I also heard from Eurodig. The, e the IGF in Uganda has always been uh, spearheaded by civil society, but this year we had a lot of government support, which is a, a positive thing for us. So just uh, not to hold you between you and your coffee, I'll just look at the emerging issues. One of the biggest emerging issues was uh, um, protecting on uh, children online. So actually the main theme was promoting online safety, especially for the vulnerable and well targeting children. And uh, we heard from uh, our government that uh, this is a program that uh, is going to be taken on. And uh, they also reported to us that uh, in the past IGS, we, talk, we are talking about a lot of policy issues. And uh, this year, we had a number of uh, policies, especially cyber laws that were passed. So it, for us, it was positive to hear government reporting to us that they are implementing on some of the issues that uh, we had been talking about. Um, last but not least, Nena. We talked about the issue of e-governance, especially at uh, open governance. We posed the question whether government was doing enough because one of the main challenges we are facing is not just infrastructure, but accessing information. So this was a big issue. And also the issue of uh, internet liability. Uh, last year, we had a lot of uh, government talk. We had a lot of uh, interference in um, how ISPs were we're operating. We had uh, a number of takedowns of on um, certain contents, although it wasn't successive, but this is an issue that is coming up in Uganda. Um, on the next steps, we are having um, one of the challenges, and I would really like to see how the other IGFs are doing it, is how to involve private sector in these discussions, because for us it has been a challenge, and it's one of the things that we are looking on taking on in the coming uh, IGFs, and also we came up with a sort of, of a, a reference group that we would like to see taking on the IGF, the Uganda IGF to another level. So in the next session, I would really die to see how the other IGFs are dealing with some of the challenges that were identified. Thank you, Nena. Asante sana. So what we'll be go doing after break once again is to continue our discussions on emerging issues if they are burning issues that have not been mentioned, we will please ask you to bring them in so we have a greater idea. We will look at the ad management and administration of our IGFs and we'll look at key challenges and a few recommendations. Once again, thank you for coming. And one great issue has just emerged and that is coffee. See you.